Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, aka Lilyworks, and today I decided to do another list with me type video. I might as well list while recording. Um, so make sure you guys get your listings out, get to your light table or wherever you start taking pictures, and let's just work together. Hopefully you guys can learn some tips and tricks. Hopefully you guys get some motivation or you can just hang out. Let me know what's going on with you guys. So today I'm planning on jewelry. I do have some belts. I just listed a bunch of ties yesterday. So I have those in my store. I have some purses. My um, three-year-old just broke one of my shoe stands. So I haven't listed shoes in a while. So I have to do that. Um, so we'll, we'll see what we can uh, get to today. So Let's go list. All right, you guys. Um, anyways, we are going to do some listing with me. I thought I might as well since I'm here. Um, I'm going to do some jewelry, maybe a purse, and then I already did belts, as you can see. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I always end up writing the belt um, dimensions on my hand. I just, that's just been a thing for like the last three years. Anyways, I just repaired this celluloid um, pendant right here. So if you remember, I think I got this out of either the high bid or my neighbor auction, um, or I'm sorry, my neighbor's collection that I purchased. And this is a celluloid pendant. You can tell that it's a celluloid pendant because it the plastic feels so much lighter than it actually is. I don't think it's carved amber. <laughs> like this would be a big giant slab. It is amber tone, but this is very lovely. Um, this has the spring ring clasp, and what I did is I took out this, like, Sarah Coventry looking um, Asian style vintage necklace that is a lot of wear. I have it right here in my um, craft, craft lot right there, and then I took the little jump rings because um, I didn't want brand new jump rings. Let me just show you. Right here, that would be really, really bright and bold. So... Um, we're just going to go ahead and take some pictures. So I have some options here. So I can either take pictures on the this bust right here. I feel like the color kind of gets lost a little bit on this black bust. I might choose to have um, this to be on the white background here and maybe this um, be like a second picture or something, but I can choose to uh, take a, it fully like that. I can choose to have my main picture um, be like more of a close-up of the pendant. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna lay it out on the white. So I'm giving myself some options of what looks best and then I kind of determine, okay, which ones would stand out most to the buyer. So I'm going to have um, full and then maybe closer up. I might hold it up to the light. Isn't it gorgeous? It is gorgeous. I might wear this a couple times. Um, and then obviously taking a picture of the spring ring just to verify that it's vintage and its condition. And then I'm going to take a picture next to this ruler with one hand here um, so I can see that it's about a 24 inch chain because my 12 inches hits right there and then they can also see the length of the pendant there so um, that might be all I do and then I'm going to put it back into this bag I have some lined up here ready for me to go and then I have more right here ready to list that I am I'm um, waiting to list here. They're already bagged up. And yeah, let's let's just uh maybe I'll speed things up and talk talk through it. Alright, next I just pulled it out of this bag. Uh this is wait, does it just what does it say? 
it says China, but I believe this is the Joan Rivers. Yes. So I had a Joan Rivers lot recently. The kids are playing. Daddy just got home. So um, listing here. I think that looks really good. And sometimes I can tap my screen and turn up the brightness that really washes it out turn it down so that the black is darker um, but I think that actually looks good right in the middle I might hold this in my fingers to just show some of the detail and that these AB glass faceted beads are like see-through maybe um, they are playing you can hear them I'm going to take a picture of the Joan Rivers. Daddy's got it. So no worries. And then Joan Rivers jewelry is marked from all over the place. And this one in particular is from China. Okay. I'm actually just going to, maybe I'll do like a, like a little double choker look. Someone could potentially wear it like that. Okay. Let's see. With one hand, it's a little... A little tricky okay so something along those lines which is fun and then putting it out get rid of the fuzz okay there's another picture all right now we're just gonna do the length sometimes I try to get my extender chain out there just so people know that there is one um and then there we go so this one's about 28 inches um for how long it is all right i'm gonna go put this one in and we can do that one and that one okay i just pulled this one out i for some reason was like oh is this j crew and then remembered that it's another joan rivers <laughs> And this one also says China, Joan Rivers, and this one is really highly layered and more modern. So already thinking of some good keywords and that looks good. I can choose to do something a little closer because this doesn't really add to it besides how it might look. Um, but if you're like having like a vintage piece that has a lot of detail, honestly, I think that the pictures that show them or that get the most attention are the ones that show a lot of detail because if I were just doing this right here versus this versus like this you have to start to consider like which one um, looks the best and catches um, the most attention okay so I have that one I'm gonna do like a little layered shot and then I thought maybe one of these was a little bit scratched eh, not too bad it's actually in pretty good shape all right I'm gonna take that off I'm gonna lay it down this is more of like a collar style um let's see Joan Rivers right there I can do how the back looks super well made super super like do you see the construction so nice okay and then let's get the length there we go so we're at about 20 inches because of this little space right here there we go all right isn't that so beautiful yeah this is a um, future vintage piece for sure okay so I just pulled this one out oh my gosh this one is going to be my um, I'm pricing up <laughs> um, piece because I'm going to be keeping this for a while and if a collector out there wants it more than me then they will pay me what I feel is worth um, being removed from my collection and you will not believe it but I think I got a, a lot of is it like three pieces of cloisonne um, with which this one was the best but um, I 
think I paid only like nine or twelve dollars on shopgoodwill.com and ha 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 this this is what I was looking at but just one of those pieces would probably make me my money back um and this is jade and amethyst wow right okay so I'll just show you on okay so that looks pretty so I'm just going to take the picture here but I'm actually going to probably choose my main picture to be against here and um, maybe like turn up the brightness a little bit. See how the purple, you can see through it a little bit more when I turn up the brightness and then show some detail shots here. Show the clasp. Oh, I did not test the clasp yet. Um, or like if it's gold over sterling or anything like that um so I might okay so this is a little chunky I might just un toggle this toggle because it does it looks a little tarnished and it also has some really high quality beads oh I really want to know what this bead is right there because it's like dark blue really dark blue and then there's also these beads at the top that kind of look like onyx. So I'm going to take this picture first and then maybe do some testing while we're here. Um, okay, let's get all the way. And honestly, I really don't even care that that bust mannequin thing is in the background. Because honestly, the measurements are more for me, even though I do list this picture, but I put my measurements in my title. Okay, so I have my Presidium here. I have to plug it in real quick. So when you plug it in, it will make a beep. Let me turn it on. Let me drink some of my my delicious um, Lemon Perfect get that on Amazon and so while we're waiting for this to heat up I'm going to grab my stone for testing and my acid which I have um, out of the reach of children because you never know you never know if they try it like can somehow get into this room I think I like my testing acid is like the thing I'm most highly paranoid about in my house, like period. Stairs or anything. And I, I don't really know what it can do, but I don't think it would be good. All right. So I'm going to try scratching this as best as I can um, with one hand. So do you see how this is like silver underneath? I'm not even going to test it for gold because it's either nothing or it could be um, sterling silver underneath. Um, and you, as you can see, like this is the line where I started, where it was more gold tone. And then this is like the more silver tone once it got underneath. So just using my 18 karat gold testing um, acid to see if it's sterling silver because sterling silver will be bright blue with the 18 karat gold acid and it's not so that is totally fine um let's see what presidium um can tell us here i also have this out because it definitely looks sterling and some things i know in the past i've thrown into craft lots that i don't think i scratched well enough so if it's like rhodium plated you need to scratch harder. So just pulled that out of my craft lot right now. Okay, so we have, obviously we'll do purple and that's going to amethyst. And then the green actually might, it's a little speckled. It could be jade or adventuring, but no, it's jade. So it's going right to jade. Okay, where is the blue? So there's this blue one. It's like maybe blackish blue, maybe an onyx. I don't think, like I still haven't figured out <laughs> what onyx would test as, but it definitely would be more than glass. So if it's black and it tests more than glass, I usually assume that it's onyx, even though I don't know the hardness of some tiny little tiny ball 
beads with one hand, which is really difficult while I'm holding the phone. So bear with me. All right, so I'm trying this big blackish, maybe it is black, um, bead right here, and it is going past. Well, let's see. It just was. Okay, let me try. <laughs> let me try it again. Maybe I accidentally heated it up. Let's see. Okay. This is very, very difficult. I'm pretty sure this is onyx, honestly. There we go. See, okay, so it goes past glass for sure. I believe this is black. Um, or maybe blue. But anyways, lovely, love, love, love. All right. So we know a little bit more about that so I can list it more effectively. And then I have this purse here. So let's move my acid out. All right, we move my acid out of the way, move the testing out of the way. Okay, I just got this one out. It actually feels like wool. I'm wondering if it is. I got this really cheap um, in the Shop Goodwill like auction. This was just by itself, but I also got that. Um, you guys remember when I got these pieces for $16 in Appleton and picked up some pieces? This was one of the things I just got in the whole lot, so I didn't have to pay shipping. Um, and I absolutely love it. This is the kind of thing that I do really like selling just because I think it's gorgeous. And this is actually a really big size for this, like, tapestry pattern. Okay, so I can either um go way up here like that maybe i'll do that or i could just <laughs> figure out something like showing the detail up close i know a lot of people do that in their pictures right like if it's like a needle point or something okay so i might just start up here so they can see the full thing i really like this ruffling at the top look at how nice this is okay so then i'm gonna do a little bit closer and then I might do like a little, this is what the texture looks like. Let's do the other side. The other side looks like it's in great shape as well. And then we have the clasp here. It's open. This is fantastic, right? Okay, ooh, we have a label in there as well. I did not show this in the pictures, the inside. Okay, so what does it say? Ooh, Austria. Back, Hassan. Fun. Okay, so we're gonna try to get <laughs> what the black interior looks like, right? Which is actually in really great shape. Okay, so I did that. There's not really a whole lot to see in a black interior. I am going to take a picture of this wear right here of the chain, and then we're going to take a measurement. And this is called a drop strap. So um, I would consider this like a shoulder bag possibly or just like a not a, not necessarily a top handle bag where you just hold it. It's a little bit longer. So this would be, oh, let me move that up a little bit. This would be the drop strap length. Then I'm going to take the length of the purse itself and then the width and then you can even do the depth this doesn't have a lot of depth let's see <laughs> there we go we have like about an inch and a half of depth Oop, that one was blurry there we go okay so that was fun I really like this and then I'm going to put that into this bag here um, I realize I have a tie here. <laughs> I don't know if I want to picture ties. I just pictured all of the Gucci and YSL and Hermes ties yesterday. Pfft. Compared to that, Snoopy is like silly. <laughs> I think I might have gotten this for my husband or something. I'm not even sure. Joe Cool. I don't know what I'm going to do with this right now, but um, I think I'm going to do a belt as well. I have a belt here. So we can do a belt together as well. So we have this belt here. It looks very stubby. <laughs> it is a wide vintage belt here. So what I usually do is I wrap it around twice and then buckle it. 
it's just what I do. You don't have to do it this way. Some people use a mannequin. I prefer to just sit and use my light box for everything, honestly. Um, and I was telling Lisa, who who is a subscriber, that um, I got out of reselling clothing real quick because the whole measurements thing. Okay, so anyways, I was saying that the whole measurements thing was too much for me. Um, <laughs> I'd much rather just sit and get listings done. So anyways, I will take a picture of the top and the bottom. Obviously, my way of listing is not the way of listing, you guys. Like, don't think that I'm telling you guys all, to all copy me. This is just giving you some, I don't know, different perspective and maybe some tips. I'm not even sure. But or maybe we're just working together. Maybe we're chilling. Okay, so I don't know if you guys caught this, but this is an Oscar de la Renta vintage belt. Probably from the 1970s. This is suede, so I might take a picture of the texture. It's in really great shape. Um, and then I'm going to take a picture of the width. So almost two inches. And then maybe like a close-up of any um, defects or anything like that, which really there isn't a lot. This is in really great shape. I see people are commenting in the Facebook group. Um, and then what I do is I don't take a picture of the tape measure um, like laid out because a lot of belts are too long. So I will just measure from this part of the buckle right here, the end all the way to the first hole and the last hole. And then I will say fits from blah, blah, blah to blah, blah, blah. And then I write it on my hand. Yeah, so um, I have um, this these bags that I use for a lot of different things, mostly belts, but they are the six by nine inch clear bags. I have them linked below in my description um, along with basically anything I use for my business but I roll up the belts and they fit in here really nicely. And then um, when people, okay, um, when people unroll it, it's already kind of in the shape of, you know, your waist. So yeah, it's already self sticking. I did a really bad job with one hand, but you get it. And then guess what I do, you guys? I have a basket over there and I try to make it into the basket. And there we go. So I made it. And um, I'm going to go upstairs with you guys. So if you guys want to know what the playroom looks like while mom was working. This is where we're at. Gideon. This is where we're at. This is, and James is working. <laughs> Gideon, where are you? He's over here. Here go. Gideon. Where are you? So this is where... We, uh, where they can play, we have a projector screen right there, um, but they choose to work with Mama. But today, Daddy's playing with them, kind of. I'm Put it on. The mm. You can do it. I can't. I can't stand. What? I'm so it's because you have a big head. <gasps> Try again. Keep push it back a little bit more. Where's Gideon? Gideon, he's a he's a fairy. He's a fairy. He's a fairy. Like my cat, the pillar's butterfly wings. You're right, our monarch caterpillar. You are right. I'm just a fairy, not. A fairy. Yeah, so we I'm have a, a lot of things happening down here, and as you can see, Mama does put labels on all of the bins so that they know where everything goes. But it's a little Mama? tricky. It's a little tricky Mama, to clean up. Can you have your phone to play Princess Music? Because I want to dance. Daddy has a phone to play Princess Music. Because I want to dance. That's not Princess Music. Okay, we're going up the stairs. And I wanted to show you guys um, our caterpillars. So we have the monarch caterpillars in here and at the top you guys see that up there there's one chrysalis maybe I'll turn on the lights that might help there we go and then we have one caterpillar still eating some milkweed so 
there we go. Okay, so now we are at my little light box in my bedroom. So literally, I'm right next to my bed. <laughs> um, and I wanted to ask who sent this. I, I had a live the other day where I had asked, but who sent me this Murano stick pin that is absolutely gorgeous? It came from Italy. Nobody, um, there was no name on it. It just basically had a customs, customs label from Italy. It's from Nero v Venzia, made in Italy. There is an Etsy page to this company. So I did find that and this is authentic Murano. So thank you and let me know who gave me some friend mail because that is super awesome and generous of you. Thank you so much. It is so gorgeous. I'm going to put it in my collection. All right. So I pulled a couple pieces that we're just going to list in my small light box here. Um, this is really easy. You can even have a small light box like this on your lap while you're watching TV. I just keep it on this little like vintage um, desk thing that pulls out. Uh, I don't know if you guys can even see it really, but yeah, I just keep this in my room. So I have some earrings and then do you guys remember I pulled this out, did test it and it's sterling. So this is one of those vintage sterling spoon or fork handle things that they turned into a pendant. So that was pretty interesting. And I think I'm just going to sell it as is and not put it on a chain because I feel like it would need to go with a sterling chain and I don't have a sterling chain that would be like thick enough to go well with this or it might possibly go well on a sterling like torque or maybe a leather cord or something. But let's get to listing a couple things in the small light box before, I'm sorry, taking pictures of the these things and then we'll, we'll go ahead and list all the things we took pictures of. Okay. So back to photo, make sure your photos are in one by one because platforms like to see that better. So sometimes if there's like a shadow, right? If there's like a shadow from my phone over the images, you can just press it to zoom in a little bit more. So now it's at three times and then go back a little bit and that kind of took away that shadow. I might do that. I might do this for scale, like in my fingers, um, maybe one to the side. <laughs> I couldn't really read the letters because it is behind there. I'm thinking that S is for sterling. And then maybe a close up of the detail. And we will do the measurement right there. And then let's do these funky enamel earrings that also came out of the $16 10-pound jewelry lot. Back up. So I do have like earring stands, different ways to hold earrings. Um, this one, I don't really particularly like that one at all. But I actually end up, for the most part, just using a white background because I like having the earrings close together. I like the white in the back. Um, and then sometimes I'll just honestly hold them in my hand because if they were like huge like this, sometimes it's good to see right off the bat that they are huge. Okay. These are glitter, like textured. So, um, and then that one is missing a backing. Let me just check my drawer for a backing real quick. Put a vintage backing that matches on. There we go. And I'll take a picture of both of them. And then there we go. All right, let's get to listing. All right, we are ready to start listing. Um, if you guys haven't seen any of my other list with me's, I go into it a little bit um, deeper on how I use these apps. But I use my PickTap Go for my first, um, just like my first um, main picture. 
my featured picture to just brighten it or anything, um, touch it up a little bit. So I'm looking at this necklace. I just listed these two belts here and some other jewelry earlier this morning. So we're looking at this celluloid necklace that I just took pictures of and I'm looking at which one looks the best, which one shows the best detail and catches, um, your attention. So I don't know, this one really looks good with the black over here. The first one we took, I just like that you can see it in this one. You can see through it and you can see more of like that amber color. So I'm going to edit it just using my pick tap go using this. I want it to be too bright that it throws it off. So I'm saving that to my gallery. And then what I can do is I can use my Google lens to see if anything shows up, which Let's see, carnelian, no, um, I don't really see anything that looks like this. So we're going to have to start thinking, okay, what are some really great keywords that I can use here? Um, so I'm going to look at vintage, amber, celluloid, tassel necklace let's see if anything pops up um so we have art deck art deco celluloid faux butterscotch egg yolk so that is not um anything like ours we do not have actual amber so i might just do celluloid tassel and see if anything pops up now there's a lot of tribal looking um necklaces that are around the 70 $80 mark. This one, this person doesn't know if it's celluloid. Um, let's see. Catalan, celluloid Catalan. Catalan is another type of plastic. I don't think they're the same thing. I don't think celluloid and Catalan are the same. Um, let's see. Carved bovine, faux bovine bone. No. So I don't see anything here like ours. Ooh, look at a Miriam Haskell. Really? Really? That that catches my attention. Look. Oh, it is. And uh, there's that clasp right there. So this clasp, um, someone was asking about this on the Facebook page. So she does use that clasp. It's usually marked or it has the hang tag next to it. So yeah, the patent number that's on these Miriam Haskell clasps can also say like Miriam Haskell has, has used these um, <laughs> clasps and she did. Um, so basically what I am learning from this is like I have something that's pretty unique and I'm going to price it at what I want. This is kind of giving me a pretty good range. All right, so I'm going to take out tassel and then I'm going to type in am so I took out tassel and I'm, I put in amber colored instead, but I'm not really seeing a lot. I do see Bakelite and celluloid, which a lot of jewelry um, that has both in it, but I don't really see it. So I'm just going to put, go ahead and use my eBay search, my picture search, upload that picture. And sometimes... Um, the eBay search can give you a little bit more, but obviously don't see it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my vintage cell celluloid tassel necklace and then just really keyword it a lot. So I'm just basically picking a random one and I'm going to be changing around the words. Um, obviously go down, sell one like this saves you a bunch of time. I'm going to upload, this is my main picture, upload, and then I'm going to go in, find the rest of my pictures, so that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and then again, I'm looking to see, okay, it was 24 inch chain, so I'm going to take out Miriam Haskell for sure, take out red coral, take out stunning vintage, Amber tone celluloid. Um, I think it's carved celluloid. Um, pendant. I 
maybe like a scrolling open scroll pendant tassel necklace you can i might put hard to find rare because as you saw like we did not find something like that and it might be one of a kind which is o o a k is the abbreviation for that but if i was a buyer i would have no idea what that meant i actually didn't know what that meant uh, until like more recently o o a k so i try to put things that like buyers would know that's another reason why I put vintage instead of VTG. I just wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to know what I'm selling. So we know that this is 24 inch necklace. And then I have a few more characters. So I'm just going to put hard to find. And then what I'm going to do, <laughs> HTF. Maybe someone would, would know what that is. But I'm also going to put hard to find down here. Okay, so let's go back up to our item specifics. Definitely fill out the, the first few. Not a collar. Eh, I would say it's just a pendant. It could be a statement as well. So we have pendant and statement. Then we don't have any stones, so I'm unclicking that. Main stone color. I like to choose something that is offered instead of typing my own just to make it more searchable and so amber is not a choice so the closest would be brown base metal no idea material celluloid metal brass i don't think it is and then we already have the necklace length i'm going to put women tassel fashion yes signed no vintage yes and then um, I'm going to go into my clipboard. You guys might have seen that I went over this in one of my um, previous videos, but I have all my preset things and I would say this is in great condition. There's a little bit of wear to the metal, not too bad though. And like, honestly, it's to be expected for the age. So you can even write that like to be expected for age or wear where to be expected like for age of the item or whatever you want to put all right pricing this is where i get to make my own thing because with a lot of vintage pieces and jewelry and things like that that are unique you just you price it up and see if someone either buys it or makes you an offer so i'm going to do 99.99 .99. there we go and then i'm going to accept out offers and what happens is someone will watch this someone who collects um vintage jewelry celluloid jewelry they'll go ahead and heart it and then i might send them an offer for 85 dollars, and then they're like oh i like that that's 15 dollars off so in their mind they feel like they're getting a good deal even though i've initially like priced it way up so um that's how that works and like if i were to price it at $85, for instance, and not put on offers, I probably wouldn't sell it as quickly as if I put offers on because there's some kind of um, just like a thought process of buyers. And I'm totally like that, that they feel like they're getting a good deal if they get a discount on an original price. So because this is over $50, I change it to priority mail because then it is insured. So yeah, three ounces. This all looks fine as long as it's under four ounces and under 10 by 10 by 10. It's going priority. And then my listing fee is 25 cents because I've surpassed my listings allotted for my store. So that's fine. Instead of going to the next subscription level, I'm just paying my extra listing fees because it doesn't really financially make sense to pay $59 um, instead of, you know, 25 cents here and there. So I'm done with that one. All right, and on to the next one. This one I'm probably going to be using Google Lens for because it probably does come up with the Joan Rivers and there we go. Oh, someone has it for $10. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. It is not worth $10. So um, let's also keep in mind that we are cross-posting to multiple platforms. So if someone is looking 
on, say, Poshmark, they might find this one. Let's see what they... So they put Joan Rivers Classic Collections, Classics Collection Cheetah Bead Neck. Okay, so there's a lot going on. So if I put in more words, even if it's on Poshmark, they probably would find mine first. Because if I put, if I took out Classics Collection and I put Joan Rivers Animal Print Glass Faceted Bead Statement Cheetah Leopard bead and then the full word necklace you know like I'm actually using more searchable terms <laughs> I think mine would be found quicker I don't think that these pictures are terrible either let's see and they did actually put more um details in the description like the actual size of the beads with amber aurora borealis wow so Okay, so I don't know how they know that it's a 14 karat gold electroplated extension chain. That's interesting. Um, so they actually put a lot more in the description than the actual title, which I actually do the reverse. And then they put for the size, only one size, which they could have put 30 inch, inches right into the size right there instead of putting it down here. Um, okay, so there's that, which we are not going to copy at all. Um, but we do see an eBay listing right here and theirs looks a lot darker than mine and it doesn't stand out. And then also the blessed and the candle, it kind of distracts from the focal point, which is the necklace. So we're just going to visit it anyways. All right. This buyer is also away. Um, and then they have it listed for 30. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put Joan Rivers Animal Print Necklace. Just so that I get a feel of what the whole entire market is doing as far as these necklaces. So because what I could do is I could choose to price it in the middle and send out offers. And then also it can give me other keywords or it could... um give me the, uh, like the collection title, or maybe some, um, person has worn it that was famous or in a TV show, like let other people do the research, right? <laughs> and you just can copy them. Um, so this person has it for 20, but they do not have it sponsored. Like you can see down here sponsored. So um, all the sponsored listings tend to be more toward the top and I do sponsor mine. So um, because all of these are not sponsored at the top, mine, once I sponsor it using the promoted listings, mine would be like the top pick. So it looks like $30 is a good deal for it. Now I'm just going to pick which one I like the best. And... Um, I don't know what Joan Quill, John Quill, yellow glass. I have no idea what that is. Okay, so I'm just going to click on that and we are going to sell similar. And then upload all of the pictures. This one is, it says 28, but we have an extension, extender chain. So yeah, it's around 30. So I'm going to take that out. I have no idea what that is. So Joan Rivers Animal Print. I think I will also put Leopard and then Cheetah. I think those are both important because um, a lot of people do like their um, animal prints, cheetah, and they had glass in here twice, um, so I took out glass again, yellow glass, bead, gold tone, eh, that doesn't really add, because just the, the clasp is gold tone, so yellow, I might do faceted AB, let's see if that fits in here, faceted, last speed and then I'm just going to upper case that and then 
yeah, that looks good to me. All right, pre-owned, Joan Rivers, yes. Theme, yes. Color, I will probably just go ahead and click one, brown. Um, yellow gold plated, don't know. Necklace length, we're going to do 30. And then everything else looks fine. Okay, so this is actually in excellent condition. And then I'm going to do $29.99. She is a princess, Mama. Wow, that's beautiful, honey. I put a bow on to make it even more. Wow. All right, go get your pajamas on. Say, okay, Mama. Sure. All right, let's list this. Petey, go get your pajamas on. Mama, do you like this on? Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to go through these next two quickly, um, like fast forward style, because you guys kind of already know, and if you need to pause it, you can, um, but I'm just going to list these pretty quickly, and then we'll do the purse together. We are at the purse, which is actually pretty big for what it is. I like this one. Save that. And I'm going to Google Lens this to give me a little bit more info. So some people might consider it needle point. I'm wondering if it's just like a tapestry type thing. Wahlberg tapestry. It's not the same. So I'm just kind of um, going through this, looking at keywords first, possibly giving me an age or something like that. Um, definitely floral tapestry chain. See, mine look looks nicer than these with the little kiss lock 
clasp at the top. So what I'm going to look at next is I took a picture of the label. So back Hawson. So I'm going to go ahead and Google. I'm going to go ahead and Google back Hawson um, purse. <laughs> See if anything comes up. So no. So what there is such a thing as back Hawson. Maybe if I just do in the regular um, back Hawson purse. Oh, why did I spell it wrong? So here's one. Okay, so here's one that looks exactly like mine. Um, and they call it P Petty Point. Um, let's just visit real quick. So it did sell. Wait, did it sell? Uh-oh, we lost it. Um, visit, okay. Sold, so it did sell for $89.99. That is good to know. So that's good. Okay, let's just look up close at it again. So it does say the same thing as mine. Um, and it sold for $89.99, which is great. <laughs> Um, okay. And they actually have very fantastic photos. The only thing that's missing is the shadows. So I know that they used an editor to take out the background. I do like having a little bit more dimension in my photos. I like having shadows, but this actually looks super, super nice anyways. So they did a great job and I don't mind having, um, the, uh, the, what is it? The brand capitalized like that doesn't matter to me because it does stand out um but when things are like all capital it kind of feels like it's yelling so um yeah so they thought it was 1930s I wonder what tells them that maybe it's Austria interesting um let me just recheck mine to see if it's petty point because it is small. Let's go back to this one. I don't know. I don't think that it is Petty Point. It looks more of just like a woven, a woven tapestry to me. Um, so I might not use that. <laughs> okay, we're going to go back to this one and we're going to sell one like it. I mean, it's Petty Point style. Oh, they, okay, so Petty Point Tapestry. And I don't think it's antique either. Because even if it's 1930s, it's not considered antique yet. Antique is 100 years old. Oh, we're taking that one out. Okay, so I'm going to revise this. We're going to say Vintage. Backhausen, Austria, Handmade. Petty Point Tapestry Purse. So I'm going to put Petty Point Style. Because I'm not quite sure if it is. But it definitely is in the style of it. Um, I also think that it's large. But I can't fit that. Um, it's floral. I can't fit that. So... All right, I think that's all we're going to have for that. Material, tapestry, brand, handmade. We're going to do Backhausen, right? Is that how we spell it? Let me just recheck. Backhausen, yes. Backhausen, decade. I am not sure. Unknown. Okay, perfect. Unknown, multicolor, look, Art Nouveau, Austria. Okay, I agree. Um, floral. Wait, we'll do colorful. Floral on black background. Large for this type of 
tapestry bag. We're going to say it's in great condition, has minor signs of wear, to chain, and then I want to put the drop. So what is the drop measurement? 11 inch drop. 11 inch drop strap. Okay. And then we're going to do $89.99 just like the other person. I might not get that, but all right. And I would send this priority and it's about two pounds. Yes. And I want it to be anything less than 10 by 10 by 10 because I could fit it into a box and priority. Yeah. So buyer pays about that much and let's list. Okay. Done. And then let's go to our belt, which is right here. And this might be the last thing I list with you guys. Um, just because I'm running out of space, but we'll do vintage suede Oscar de la Renta belt. Let's see what comes up. There's that one and 46. So nothing like mine. Let's see. Filter. There's probably not going to be a lot of sold. So let's see. No exact matches. So we're going to take that back off. Okay. So we're just going to have to. Um, yeah. We're just going to have to make up our own title. By borrowing some words from this one. I know that it's wide. I know that it's brown. I know that it's a waist belt. And I know it's like vintage designer. And there we go. Upload. This I believe I paid $4.99 at Salvation Army. So Oscar de la Renta. Take out navy blue. We're going to do brown. Wide. We're going to put in waist. Now, it didn't have a size. But I... Put measurements on my hand and it says 25 and a half to 29 inches. So that is telling me that that is a small waist. So I can either do small or it could even be extra small. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep it at small and then I'll just write fits um, 25 and a half to 29 inches inch waist so this is definitely a like statement waist belt it would go really well with like dark academia so i can even put that um in perfectly paired with dark academia here we go. Fits, blah, blah, blah. That looks good. All right, let's change this. Color brown. Small, adjustable belt, yes. But I want to put it as... I want it to be waist belt. It is wide. Suede leather. Accents. Oh, not beaded. Buckle. It does have a buckle. Um, solid hardware material. I don't think that really matters unless it's like brass or sterling. Um, vintage, yes. Okay, so I am going to probably just put it as $39.99. I'm just literally making up that price. Oh, online trending price. Let's see. Oh, someone did sell an Oscar de la Renta, but it's red and it's a lot prettier than <laughs> mine. So, should I do $49.99 and take best offers? Okay, leave those there. All right, I turned best offers on, and I'm going to do first class, but usually belts are, like, 
between six and like eight ounces. So I'm just going to leave it at that. We'll do six by four by four. And yeah, we'll see if we get any offers on that. All right, let's see if we can maybe squeeze in a little bit more. Let's do, uh, let's just do these real quick. And then I'll have to do the pendant later because I feel like that might take a little bit <laughs> more time. Okay, so this is fun, really like retro fun. So we already have some hexagon enamel earrings popping up. Let's try to get both. Okay, so we have some dies. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do vintage 80s hex hexagon enamel earrings. Okay, we have some that pop up, so we will just pick it and then put in our own words. I'm going to do, um, they are colorful, so we'll do colorful enamel stud earrings. I'm just going to take those out, gold tone, take that out, and I'll do retro I'll do glitter, geometric, hexagon, stud, earrings, let's see, and then we'll do 1980s, all right, I guess there is a main color here and it looks blue, so maybe I should put blue in instead of that. So colorful blue enamel stud. Okay, that looks good. Condition pre-owned, unbranded, main stone color. There's no stones. Closure is a back butterfly color. We'll just say blue. Enamel, yes. Department, ear area, lobe. And then base metal is not gold. <clears throat> Not signed, vintage, yes, antique. Okay, that all looks good to me. All right, we're gonna say these are in great condition. And I'm just making up a price because they're not that great, but they're kind of cool. And they're kind of unique. So I'm, I, my base price is usually $7.99. <laughs> my base price is $7.99. And these look, pretty cool so I'm just gonna sell them for $9.99 they might sell in a bundle and there we go listing and now I'm probably going to list the last thing and then upload them all to Vendu. so I am ready for one of my favorite things and that is Vendu. and these are some of the listings I did earlier this morning um and I did that right here in my little my little light box right there. And then, um, yeah, so all I do on my Vendu, and you guys definitely use the link um, to my Vendu. It's down below. I think you might get a discount, and it definitely helps me out a little bit as well. I definitely recommend it. I would not recommend it to you guys if I didn't think it was very helpful to cross-posting and keeping inventory and checking your analytics and all that stuff. So, um, I just go ahead and press new item up here. I just listed them all on eBay again, and then they all pop up and they're all so beautiful. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on all of them that I just listed. So seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10, and then I already listed 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, because I did not list that one today. So 20 listings for today. Um, and then they're just importing the, the 10 that I just did. 
And then I just can sit here on my bed, as you guys can see, um, while I'm reading a cookbook. <laughs> and I'm just going to easily just cross post, you guys. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed listing with me. Maybe you guys learned something new. Maybe you're gonna try belts or purses um, or other accessories. And hopefully this gave you some confidence and motivation to get to listing. So um, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And I will see you guys in my next video. Maybe we'll go shopping to an antique store. That sounds like fun. Um, and uh, yeah, make sure you're out there thrifting so you can live generously. Bye guys.